Hey, welcome back. So, nested loops. A nested loop is a loop inside of another loop. When you'll encounter them, it's really situational, so I don't really have one good example. But what I'm thinking we'll do is use a nested loop for an exercise. What I'm thinking is that we'll let a user type in a number of rows and columns and a symbol and print a rectangle of that given symbol, but the user is going to specify a number of rows and columns. So let's begin by declaring all of the different variables that we'll need, int rows, int columns, and char symbol. We'll let the user type in a number of rows and columns. Enter number of rows. Then you scan F to accept some user input. We are accepting an integer, so use D for the format specifier. Address of operator, rows. Then do the same thing with columns. Enter number of columns. Let's create our nested loops. You can use either for loops or while loops. It's just the concept of one loop inside of another. So let's use for loops for our outer loop and inner loop. The outer loop is in charge of keeping track of the rows. The inner loop will be in charge of keeping track of the columns. So I need this outer for loop to iterate once for every row that we have. So we could write something like this. Int i, set this equal to one. I need to continue this for loop as long as i is less than or equal to rows. And then increment i by one after each iteration. So now let's create a nested for loop. We will declare a loop inside of another loop. And this inner for loop is in charge of the columns. We should probably not reuse our index of i, so let's create a new index. And a common naming convention for an inner for loop is to use j, because j comes after i in the alphabet. So I will set int j equal to 1. We will continue this as long as j is less than or equal to columns. Then increment j by 1. For the time being, until we let a user type in a symbol, let's just print our index. So let's use printf. We're displaying an integer. And let's display j. And let's take a look at this. Okay, enter number of rows. How about three rows and five columns? So here's our output. We have the numbers one through five three times. So to make this more of a rectangle, a grid, I'm going to add a new line character whenever we finish a row. So printf, new line character. Let's try that again. Enter number of rows, three, number of columns, five. So we have three rows and five columns. Basically speaking, to complete one iteration of our outer loop, we have to escape our inner loop first. Once this condition is no longer true, then we will escape the inner loop and complete one iteration of the outer for loop. But then once we begin the next iteration of our for loop, we're stuck back within our inner for loop again. So that's kind of the concept. Now this time, let's let a user type in a symbol and we will create a sort of rectangle. Enter a symbol to use. Then scan f, we are accepting a character, so use the c format specifier, address of operator, our symbol variable. Now we're going to replace j with our symbol, and the format specifier for a character is c. Then let's try this again. So how about three rows and six columns? Okay, here's the issue. So we have all of this empty space. Now, when we entered our number of columns, after hitting enter, we have the new line character within our input buffer. So our next scan of function actually picked that up. So what we need to do is clear our buffer. And one simple way of doing that, there's a couple of different ways, is that we can just use scan f again. And we will read a character. And that's one way to do it. Basically, with this line, we're just getting rid of the new line character after the last time we use scanf because that's still within our buffer. Okay, let's try this one last time. What about four rows and five columns? Enter a symbol to use. Uh, how about the dollar sign? There we go, here's our rectangle. It has five columns and four rows. So yeah, that's basically a nested loop. It's a loop inside of another loop. And when you'll encounter them, it's really situational. I thought this would be good practice to understand how they work. To complete one iteration of the outer loop, 
you have to first escape the inner loop, and that may involve completing all iterations of the inner loop. So yeah, those are nested loops. If you would like a copy of this code, I will post this to the comment section down below, and well, yeah, those are nested loops in C.